Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of, no it's, it's not as podcast is it, this is a, a YouTube channel, god I've messed this crap up again haven't I, welcome back, uh, oh god, hi everyone I'm Ben Pearson, former channel 5 police interceptor and welcome to another episode of my YouTube channel and this one is going to be about the TV series Happy Valley, let's run the titles. Why am I making this video? We are making this video because we have been asked several times, if not hundreds of times, about Happy Valley. How true is it to real life policing? What's it really like? And have they got it spot on? So stick with us and we'll go through the video right now. If you want to come up to West Yorkshire, come up to a place called Halifax, Hebden Bridge and Salby Bridge, anything else that's got a bridge in its name, and that is where Happy Valley has been filmed. It's a stunning place to go for a day out. Uh, check out all the sites and scenery and yeah, and gross yourself in the West Yorkshire area. Happy Valley is written by Sally Wainwright and it stars Sarah Lancashire as Sergeant Cohorn. Cohawk? Co 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 Corn Cornwall? Corn Sergeant Kaywood. Uh, Sergeant Kaywood, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, Sarah Lancashire plays Sergeant Kaywood in Happy Valley and she is also known as Raquel from Coronation Street who are married to Curly. Sarah Lancashire, Sergeant Kaywood, is dressed in the proper police uniform and everything on that uniform is absolutely perfect. From the beginning of the titles when she puts her hat on and she puts it thumb distance away from her nose, that's how we've got to do it, to everything she's carrying including her radio, how it's all carried, where she puts her car keys and how she uses the radio is all second to none. I am apologising for my voice going croaky but I've just had some milk which I think's off in this cup of tea. <laughs> Oh, it is off, but I'm still drinking it. Still warm and wet. Dirty. I don't know who's advised um, the TV channel about what to wear and how to wear it, but they've done a fantastic job and made it look as realistic as possible. So marks out of 10 for that, it is a 10.5. Well done for setting the kit up properly and it's how it's used by West Yorkshire Police Officers. The radio chatter that is used on the programme between officers, sergeants and inspectors is absolutely brilliant. It's accurate to a T and her lingo, her codes uh, that is used for like code 6 arriving at the scene, um, code 4 which is mealing everything that is used in the show is absolutely fantastic again she either must have been out with the police or have someone close that she's been liaising with because the banter used on the radio the radio transmissions and the etiquette that is your etiquette 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 the etiquette that is used is fantastic don't worry i'm going to cut that bit out and you'll never see it thank you how Sergeant Kaywood as a sergeant is, is absolutely brilliant. There's been so many bobbies that I know have been saying, I wish that was my sergeant. And not only is she a good actress, she actually plays the role of a sergeant brilliantly. So all the bobbies I've been contacting me have been saying that they wish that was a sergeant. That's how I want my sergeant to be. She's um, respectable, she's kind, but she's also forceful when she needs to be, and she demands respect. That's what every officer wants from a sergeant. Um, there's too many people that aren't that way nowadays in the police and there's too many people that are the other way in the police. She has got the balance right and she's absolutely fantastic as a sergeant. So Sergeant Kaywood, if you were a proper sergeant, please be our sergeant and we'd love you to bits. Again, the next point is the fighting and the disturbances and the, um, how can I put it, the slaps that come on. For fuck's sake. In Happy Valley by Sergeant when she's rolling around on the floor. Again, this is absolutely accurate. I don't know who they've taken advice from, from fighting or public order, but it is again down to a T. It's done because that's what it's like when you're rolling around on the floor in Halifax Town Centre, fighting a shitbag who's just done a theft from a shop or is wanted for an offence. There's no ifs and the buts, there's no graces. It's literally a roll around on the floor. And if you get punched, you have to punch them back because what you don't want to do is have that person overpower you, take your stuff, run off with your radio or beat you to death on the floor. You kick the shit out of me on that badge! Yeah. In the line of fucking duty. 
So yeah, whoever's give the sergeant advice on that is absolutely brilliant. So thumbs up. Thank you very much. The next point I'm going to make is the job to real life. It currently shows you what she's going through on a personal level and that when you bring your job home, you do actually bring it home. It's attached to you physically and mentally. So when you get home, you can't switch off and sometimes you would rather be at work than be at home because you feel it's the only place that you are understood. <laughs> oh, that milk. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh, kill me now. It just goes to show that the job is something you take home with you and the sergeant obviously shows that to a great depth. One of those things, it's either physical or emotional. You're going to go on with bruises, battle scars, and then what have you seen that day affects you mentally and emotionally. Again, they've got this down to a T because everything she's doing is affecting her psychologically and the relationship with her friends and her family. So that is brilliant. But it just goes to show that just because you're a police officer, it doesn't mean you switch off at the end of the day. Some people still would rather go to work and express things at work than speak to their own family as they think they're more understood. They've got this balance in the TV program exactly right and perfect and a big, big kudos for that because sometimes you can't put things like that into words. You've just got to watch it and then when you watch it, it touches your soul. So thank you very much for, Sal uh, for Sally. Thank you very much, Sally. Um, you've done a brilliant job there. Awesome. Next is the Tommy Lee Royce escape from court. Now, this would be in Cat Air Prisoner, so he'd probably be escorted by firearms, and he wouldn't be allowed to be stood in the dock like that, especially with an opening. This is the only, only little bit that people have said, hmm, could that be right? The only difference is, if it was a Cat Air Prisoner, and it was Tommy Lee Royce like that, there would be police officers in the courthouse and in the courtroom not just a set of prison guards working for G4S that hasn't realised what's going to be going on. As soon as he got out of the top of the glass cage, he would be jumped on by a load of officers and given a damn good kicking. Son of a bitch! He'd be then dragged back into this glass cage and made to stand trial and gone down for life imprisonment. So unfortunately, Tommy Lee Royce, you wouldn't have gone out if we were there, we'd have give you a good slap. Please don't write in with an offensive word or moan at me. I'm just a YouTuber making a point. The end of the series were absolutely fantastic where she's got him in her kitchen. He's heavily on drugs, intoxicants, and he's badly injured. He therefore covers himself in petrol and she's got her taser drawn. As we all know, this is a no-no because a taser can start a spark and a spark can ignite the petrol. So we would not taser someone that has covered themselves in petrol. If someone covered themselves in petrol, we wouldn't taser them. We would tend to use the baton more because it would give us good distance as we don't want to be near them or cover ourselves in the flames. F fucking hell, what's going on today? If someone covered themselves in petrol, we would be more likely to use our batons on them. It basically gives us the distance we need in case they did ignite or set themselves on fire. And we don't want to be having contact with their clothing because some petrol could get on us and ignite us as well. So what we'd do is use our batons to either push them or threaten them and say, get down on the floor and stay there. Uh, but again, our main duty of care is to them, their lives and their safety. Uh, it's an absolutely fantastic ending and when he does go up in flames it's probably going to be about that long before he pass out either from the flames from the pain or from the fumes and flames going inside his lungs and suffocating him a little bit um, yeah she scorched the blanket unfortunately that's what you've got to live with and Tommy Lee Royce later popped his clogs in Halifax infirmary so good job by all and we're not really bothered that he snuffed it are we? <laughs> From me and my police colleagues and everyone else that I know around the country, they have said this is the best real-life police drama they have ever seen. Powers and procedures and how things do take place. Uh, again, I just want to say thank you to Sally, thank you to Sarah for an amazing, amazing programme. So yeah, that's me on Happy Valley. Hope you like Happy Valley. Hope you like this little bit of a video. And don't forget to subscribe, click the bell icon and look at our merchandise for everything you want in regards to PTSD awareness and mental health. Stay tuned, people, for more videos to come. And for now, thank you, Sergeant Kaywood. I love you.